Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. The way we do so is by learning few new words every day. Today is our day number 27. Day number 27. The very first word that I want to learn, that we want to learn today, is this word right here to qualify. The reason I wanted to cover this word is because, as you can obviously see, it has two meanings. First meaning, of course, everybody knows to qualify for a job, which means to meet their criteria, to meet their guideline, whatever, to qualify for something. But what does it mean to qualify a statement or an answer? For example, if somebody says, uh, uh, did you just, if you ask somebody, well, did you, did you finish the assignment? And they say, I, did, I, I finished it, but uh, allow me to qualify that statement. What does it mean by that? To qualify a statement. It means to... It means to impose conditions or restraints on it. So when you ask the person, did you finish the assignment? And they say, yes, I finished it. But allow me to qualify that statement. What they're trying to say is that, allow me to elaborate. There are, there are, there are some strings attached to it. Yes, I finished it. But they want to tell you the but part. But uh, it's not done as well as I wanted it to, to, to have been done. Or it's not done uh, in the format that you wanted it. I finished it, but it's not done in the way you wouldn't like it the way it's done. But it is done. So it's done. Is it done? Yes, it is done. But allow me to qualify it. What they're trying to tell you is that allow me to put some conditions on that answer. Allow me to limit that answer. To put some restraint on it. Yes, I finished it, but not in the way that uh, you had expected it. Not in the same format. Not in the format that you had asked me for. But it is done. So it, so it means to impose conditions or restraint on it or to somehow limit, restrict, Limit or restrict a statement. It means to limit or it means to somehow limit or restrict a statement by imposing conditions or condition or limitations or Exceptions. That's it. Did you um, did you wash all the dishes? Yes, I did. Except, well, you you qualifying your statement. Do you understand? Interesting word to qualify. Let's learn another word, which basically means the same thing, but not quite. The word is. I need the room again, so I need to erase everything. I don't know if I can go as far as that. I, I, I don't want to make it too crowded, so let's learn the next word. The next word is equivocate, as I said, which is which is a synonym of qualify. I hope you got it, so I'm going to erase it now. Again, it means to somehow limit or restrict a statement by imposing conditions or some sort of limitations or exceptions. I'm basically repeating the same thing here, to impose condition or restraint on it. To qualify your answer, to qualify your statement. For example, if you ask the child, did, did you finish the homework? And uh, he goes on to say, yes, I finished it. But, as soon as you hear the but, you might want to say, I'm not looking for but, give me an, give me, give me an unqualified yes or a no. An unqualified Unqualified yes or a no means give me an answer without any conditions on it, without any restriction on it, without any limitations on it. I do not want ifs or buts or restrictions or, or strings attached to it. I want a simple answer yes or a no. Did you finish your homework? Yes or a no. Give me an unqualified answer. That's, that's how one would use it in the context. Let's learn the next word. 
the word is equivocate. A K O K. Equivocate. What does it mean to equivocate? It means to to not give a straight answer or statement. It means to make a statement in such a way, in such a manner that it is to more than one one interpretation and it, it is usually done intentionally mislead. So you give an answer which is susceptible to make a statement or to give an answer in a manner that it is susceptible to more than one interpretation and it is not done innocuously, uh, innocuously. The word is innocuous is what I'm trying to say here. I'm going to put it on the blackboard so I can learn it properly next time. First we have to learn how to spell the bloody thing. Innocuous. I -N -N. If I find it, these digressions always come up because these words come up that I do not know how to spell, that I do not know how to pronounce. Innocuous, which means harmless. Which means harmless is done without malice. So you may make a statement which may be susceptible to more than one, uh, one uh, interpretation uh, quite innocu in, innocu innocuously or quite uh, uh, benignly uh, without malice without any reason without any without any intention to mislead or you make a mistake or you may make a statement in such a way that you knew damn well that it is susceptible to more than one interpretation which is precisely why you made this statement in such a manner because you wanted to mislead. The intention was to mislead, which is where one gives an answer, knowing damn well that it is open to more than one interpretation, and that's how one covers one's derriere. Lawyers and politicians are masters of equivocation. That is what they get paid for. It's a very cynical view, but uh, some people might agree with it, and some people may not. Where I would fall, it's neither here nor there, so we won't go there. But that's what it is. Some lawyers, some politicians, they are masters of equivocations. They, they know how to give you an answer without actually answering the questions, which, which is an art to answer someone's question without answering anything at all. That is equivocation because it's, op it's open to interpretation. It's open to, to different, different, uh, uh, different possibilities. And that is called equivocation that is a noun equivocation equivocate let's learn one more word next word again as always i need the room so we need to raise everything we're going to learn this word next time and i promise you by that time i will know exactly how to pronounce the adverb of it adverb of of it innocuous innocuously sounds right to me i'll double check anyway this is it we're done Let's, let's go on to the next word. The next word, again they are all related, the next word we want to learn is Pre Where 
he prevaricate. Prevaricate means exactly as the equivocation or qualify something, which simply means to avoid the truth. To avoid the truth. Well, I remember putting a whole bunch of synonyms for it and I, they're not here. To evade the truth. Again, they are related as I said because here is the same exact thing is going on here. A question is being asked and it is being answered in such a manner that uh, it avoids the truth. They do not tell you the truth, they just answer the questions and so they dodge the question. They, they dodge it, they, they avoid it. They do not give you a straight answers. They give you answers with all sorts of ifs and buts. It's called prevarication. To prevaricate means to avoid the truth, to, to not uh, give a straightforward answer. Here's another interesting word. I do not know why I want to cover it, but it's an interesting word. A word that you most likely will not see on the GRE. And I'll tell you why in a second. I know for those of you who are native speakers are probably laughing at me right now wanting to write the pronunciation of the word but that is as I explained to you many times that is just what I do that's my habit to make a point of writing the pronunciation of every single word no matter how simple it is the word is waffle again waffle has two meanings now I'm not talking about your breakfast uh, waffle uh, here waffle is being used as a verb and when you use this as a verb it is a colloquial word It is colloquial, it is informal speech, it's not something you're going to find in a formal speech or formal writing. What does it mean to waffle? Waffle means prevaricate. It means to, to willfully mislead. It means to speak or to write. Evasively. So if somebody is not giving you a straight answer, you might say to them, Do, don't waffle, don't waffle, just give me a straight answer, don't waffle, don't equivocate, don't prevaricate, don't, uh, don't co qualify your statement. I'm looking for a straight, simple answer to the simple questions. Did you or did you not go to the movie that evening? Give me a straight answer. No need to waffle, no need to prevaricate, no need to equivocate. I'm just not looking for a yes or a no. I'm looking for an unqualified yes or a no. That's what it is. The master, the master of prevarication that comes to my mind just now, I don't know if I should go there or not, uh, involves somebody by the name of Monica. And that's how as far as I would go. And uh, he, what the hell with it, Bill Clinton, he was a master of prevarication. Uh, the episode for those of you who know what I'm talking about when he was looking for some sort of a oral enforcement if you like or verbal enforcement if you like and uh, the episode that ensued in the uh, later on in the hearing the classic episode where he was asked a question and to which his answer was that depends on what your definition of is is the word is in quotation and that's how he answered it that depends on what your definition of is is he was prevaricating he was equivocating he was waffling he was uh, not giving you a straight answer anyway that was it that was the end for today interesting word we learned to qualify to equivocate to prevaricate to waffle well before before we before we go today let me give you an interesting statement. How should I how should I set it up? Well, she was asked if she would go out uh, with him, and she said, "Yes, I will." Of course, he was very happy. Yes, I will go out with you. Yes, I will. Provided. 
So everything was fine. I was very happy. Yes, I will. Uh, she agrees that yes, I will go out with you. I was uh, amazed and happy. Amazed because she wasn't even drunk. Yes, I will go out. Yes, I will go out with you. Everything was fine until the word provided comes. That's where the qualification starts. The statement is about to be qualified. Yes, I will go out with you. Provided, and here are the conditions, the qualification, the equivocations is going to come into it. Well, here you wouldn't use the word equivocation or prevarication. Here the word, the word, the proper word is to qualify, qualification. Here the statement is about to be qualified. Provided that, provided that certain, and again, I'm just right, as of right now, I'm having fun. That's all it is. You'll see in a second. This was the answer. I'll go out with you provided that certain, that certain meteorological conditions are met in the infernal region. I have, I have yet to figure out what she meant by that. So tomorrow perhaps uh, we'll figure out what she meant by that. Yes, I will go out with you. Provided there is a qualification, provided that certain meteorological conditions are made in the infernal region. So tomorrow we'll figure out what that means, okay? But for today we are done. See if you can figure out also on your own. And we'll crack it tomorrow. In the meantime, if you need to get hold of me uh, for personal private tutoring, I tutor for GRE, GMAT, SAT and TOEFL. So you can go to any of the website address, any of these website addresses that you see there and send me an email. Or you can go to kashmaniprep.com and send me an email from there. I do personal private tutoring over the internet via Skype. I do tutoring obviously face to face and of course also over the telephone. If there is anything at all that I can do to help you in your preparation for any of these tests, GRE, GMAT, SAT, TOEFL, SAT or TOEFL, send me an email. All right? Thanks.